the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This morning we begin with our novena to St. Joseph. Glorious St. Joseph, foster father and protector of Jesus Christ, to you I raise my heart and my hands to implore your powerful intercession. Please obtain for me from the kind heart of Jesus the help and graces necessary for my spiritual and temporal welfare. I ask particularly for the grace of a happy death and the special favor I now implore. Guardian of the Word incarnate, I feel animated with confidence that your prayers in my behalf will be graciously heard before the throne of God. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name, hear my prayer to obtain my petition. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name, hear my prayer to obtain my petition. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name, hear my prayer to obtain my petition. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name. Hear my prayer to obtain my petition. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name. Hear my prayer to obtain my petition. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name. Hear my prayer to obtain my petition. O glorious Saint Joseph, through the love you bear to Jesus Christ and for the glory of his name. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, Keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the holy ones and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossia, grace is to you and peace from God our Father. We always give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the holy ones because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. Of this you have already heard through the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you just as in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, so also among you, from the day you heard it and came to know the grace of God in truth, as you learned it from Ephrasus, 
our beloved fellow slave, who is a trustworthy minister of Christ on your behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I trust, I trust in, in the, the mercy, mercy of, of God, God forever. forever. I, like a green olive tree in the house of God, trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust, I trust in, in the mercy of God, of God forever. forever. I will thank you always for what you have done and proclaim the goodness of your name before your faithful ones. I trust, I trust in the, in the mercy, mercy of God, God forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various diseases brought them to him. He laid hands on each of them and cured them. And demons also came out from many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him, and when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, to the other towns also, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love the little details in these episodes we see from the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. I, I love because there's such a, an, an economy of words that they used when they, when they committed these, these memories, when they, re, re, when they committed these sayings and these actions of Jesus into scripture. That they're very careful in the words they used and how they used them and how they put these together. And so I think it's, it's it's important for us to, to notice that whether it's Jesus curing Simon's mother-in-law of fever or he's casting out demons, that at least in this episode of his life, they use the same word, to rebuke. He rebuked the fever. He rebuked the demons. He silenced the fever. He silenced the demons. These things that are afflicting body and mind Jesus silenced. They recognized his presence. They recognized his power. And they recognized their powerlessness in front of him when faced with him in his glory and his word. And I think it's important that we see that both the, the fever and the demons are rebuked. In our church, we have two sacraments of healing the sacrament of reconciliation, and the sacrament of anointing of the sick. And generally speaking, priests will wear the same color, the color purple. It's the same color we use for, um, for Advent and for Lent. It's a color that reminds us of, of the tunic that Jesus wore when he was being humiliated. It reminds us of when he was suffering in mind and body, the color they put on him to mock him that his triumph over the powers of death turned everything that they used to mock him into signs of his glory, including this royal purple. 
And there's a link between the sacrament of healing of the sick, of anointing of the sick, and the sacrament of reconciliation. In both of them, we call on the name of Jesus to, to, to heal. We call on the power of the Holy Spirit to bring healing of mind and of body. And in fact, the sacrament of reconciliation is an essential part of the sacrament of anointing of the sick. When we anoint someone in the hospital, we give them the opportunity to confess their sins before we move forward with the anointing. It's because we're following the example of Jesus Christ who revealed to us that we are not simply bodies and spirits, disconnected, that our, that our body goes through one reality and our spirit goes through another, that we're, that we're separated. The, the, the Greeks and the Romans had this idea that the spirit was something superior to the body. But Jesus is revealing something that we know deep within, that our bodies and our souls are one. That when we suffer in body, we suffer in soul. And when we suffer in soul, we suffer in body. I remember during my, my chaplaincy, the summer I was in Houston, uh, working as a chaplain intern, I was called to someone's room late, late, late in the night, early in the morning, and the nurse said, the doctor wants to start a new treatment with this patient, but he can't begin until the patient calms down. So the doctor told me to call the chaplain to see if we can get this patient to, to reach some level of peace where his body will be relaxed enough to be able to receive this treatment. That was the first time it really came clear to me that what we suffer in our minds affects our bodies, but we know this. Just the past few days, we've all felt this very deeply. I don't know about you, but for me, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, waiting for that storm was something was, that was going through my mind, trying to think how bad is it going to be? How am I going to keep the older priests safe? How am I going to keep everyone fed? How am I, if, if, if we lose this, if we lose that, how do I keep everyone cool if we lose power? All of that, of course, is going through our minds as we, as we anticipate the storm. But I don't know about you, but I felt that in my body. I felt that tension. My neck still hurts. I felt it in my back and in my bones. That the anxiety I was going through in my mind, I was feeling very deep within my body. And I know as I talk to people and I check in with them, that many are experiencing the same things. That yes, it's, it's, it's the heat, it's the this, but a lot of it's the uncertainty and, and people can't eat, they can't sleep because we don't suffer through things just in body or just in mind. And so the good news for us as we learn that just as Jesus can rebuke the things that ail our bodies, Jesus can rebuke the things that ail our mind. That when Jesus comes to heal us, when Jesus comes to save us, he comes to heal and save us in our wholeness, our body and our spirits. And even though we know one day our body will ultimately reach the time where it no longer, where, where, where it no longer belongs to this world, and we know that yes, our, our spirits will be, will, will, be, will be taken from our bodies and, 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 and we move on to to, to eternal life, but we believe that at the end of times we will experience the resurrection from the dead. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead when again, glorified body, glorified spirit, we are again made whole and united with God in our wholeness. It reveals the sacredness of our bodies here and now and how much Christ loves us that he knows that to heal our bodies we, it also needs us to heal our minds, and that when our minds are, at, are ill at ease, that it's our bodies that need healing too. And this is an important message because we're good about seeking healing for our bodies when we hurt, when we are sick. We feel no shame to go to the emergency room, to go to the doctor. Some of us can be a little stubborn, but for the most part, when we need healing of mind and body, we take, or, or when we he need healing of body, we take care of it. Sometimes we're not so good with our minds, with our spirits. Sometimes we feel shame when life has become too much for us. We feel like we need to handle and, and fix everything on our own. 
We don't accept the fact that there are sometimes life is just too much and that we can't do it on our own. And we feel like failures, we feel like shame. Or when someone we love is going through that and we feel like failures and shames because, and we feel ashamed because we can't find the words, we can't find the actions to, to lift them out of their sadness, their depression or, or anything that they're suffering in mind. And that's when we have to remember we're not ashamed to seek healing for our bodies. We have no reason to feel shame seeking healing for our minds and our spirits. Jesus rebukes them both with the same voice of love, with the same voice of mercy. He's telling us, do not be ashamed when the demons become too much. I'm here for you then. Do not be ashamed when your body begins to fail. I'm here for you then. In mind and in body, Jesus is here to carry us across the threshold into hope. And that's why he feeds us with his body, his soul, and his divinity every time we come to this Eucharist, that we can receive him in our bodies in as much as we receive him in our fullness, because he's come to save us in our fullness. Confident that, that the Lord knows the deepest needs of our, of our body, minds, and souls, we turn now in confidence to him as we lift up our prayers for our world and for one another. We pray for our church throughout the world that she would confidently proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ that is a gospel of freedom, a gospel of healing of mind and of body, and of salvation for all. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in the troubled spots where we focus our attention, like, our, like Afghanistan. And we pray for those places that don't come to our mind and attention, but where people are suffering. We know that Christ alone is the pathway to peace, so we come and, and call on him to guide us where we need to go. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are still struggling with the effects of Hurricane Ida. We pray for our neighbors who don't have power, who don't have access to communication. We pray for all those who are suffering anxiety of mind and, and in body as they, as they live day by day, hoping for things to, for the situation to improve. And we pray that those of us who are better placed to help will encounter a generosity of spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the victims of, of, of violence, in our city and in our country. We pray that the Lord would, would, would guide us to the pathway of peace, especially here in Baton Rouge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to this pandemic and all of its effects. We pray that, we, we pray that the Lord would, uh, would free us of, of all the impacts this has had on us in body and in spirit. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions of this Mass, which is the little and Spears family, that the Lord would be attentive to their needs this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, you sent your Son to bring us healing of mind and body. Help us as we call to you in our need, and lift us up in our hour of darkness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who is the light of the nations, in unity with the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. <coughs> Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the 
mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be in God your heart. May we be favored by you, O Lord. May sacrifices and sacrifices day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. May we wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from all sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of this holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift it up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Jared Magella, St. Alphonsus Liguori, blessed Francis Silos, and all the saints 
and who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It was Jesus who taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. From the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you all have a blessed good day. Thanks, Father. And stay safe.